I got cystic fibrosis. See, I've got cystic fibrosis. All right, back again, week two. So this week, as I mentioned last week, we are going to be talking about the surgeries that we've had and sort of how we felt before and after them um, and how that, you know, and what they've been for CF. So, you know, as related to CF, I have had numerous pick lines placed because I don't have a port. Um, but the other major surgeries that I've had have either been bronchoscopies or sinus surgery when I've had nasal polyps removed. Um, <clears throat> I've only had four bronchoscopies in my life, and I think I've had sinus surgery maybe three times. Um, I still get polyps, and I, my sinuses are still really messed up, but I've uh, found ways to sort of manage it and not have to have as many surgeries unless they've really been needed. So I haven't had a sinus surgery in a very long time. <clears throat> um, but, you know, I, I guess sort of my feelings about them are that, you know, obviously I had the majority of my sinus surgeries and bronchoscopies growing up. And I didn't fully understand CF and the reason why I was having them back then. I knew it would sort of flush things out, clean me out a little bit. They usually always happen sort of like right before I went to college. Uh, I had one. They happened, I believe, right before high school. I had sinus surgery and uh, bronchoscopy. And then another set <clears throat> when I was younger. Um... I think the worst thing for me growing up was always the sinus surgery. Um, and I was not a fan of the combo with the sinus surgery and the bronchoscopy because I can vis vividly remember waking up and having my sinuses packed with gauze and a super sore, scratchy, itchy throat from the uh, bronchoscopy. And how I couldn't breathe through my nose because it was packed with gauze to you know, stop the bleeding and start to heal it. And my throat was super sore, so I had to breathe through my mouth, which made my throat drier and hurt more. Um, so I sucked on a lot of ice chips. But um, they helped, and um, so I felt better after. Uh, uh, obviously, always nervous beforehand, especially when I was younger. But again, not really fully understanding it, so not really being able to... Uh, comprehend it and not really remembering um, except for the part that I just shared with sort of the aftermath of the gauze and the the packing of my sinuses um, but my sinuses always felt much better afterwards um, for a while until the polyps grew back um, my most recent uh, bronchoscopy was when I was really sick a couple of years ago and <clears throat> we couldn't figure out why um, my lung function kept declining and what was going on. So we did a bronchoscopy to go in, flush some stuff out, and try to see deeper down in my lungs what was growing. Um, we did find something else which helped to stabilize everything. So in the long run, um, <clears throat> it was very beneficial. Um, leading up to this one, I wasn't as nervous because I'd had them before. Um, afterwards, I was disappointed because it was sort of like, hey, it's a be about a two-day recovery. You should be feeling much better in about two days uh, or so. For me, it took about a week. Uh, I got a fever for a couple of days, which can happen with, you know, mixing up all that junk in your lungs. Um, <clears throat> but I did get a fever. Uh, my lung function actually declined a little bit right after that. It was harder for me to breathe. Um, and so that was scary initially because... Um, this was supposed to help potentially, and uh, it made it worse initially. But then again, after the five days or so, when I started to feel better and the fevers were gone and my lungs had started to sort of to relax and calm down from the agitation, uh, I did start to feel better. And obviously my lungs function started to increase and stabilize once we found out what was going on in there. So in the long run, I think it was a good experience. Um, Overall, because it helped find something else that was growing that I didn't know was there. But we didn't know with my care team before. Um, <clears throat> the other major surgeries I've had related to CF, like I said, um, are pick line placements. Um, I can remember the first time getting one. Um, 
which is about a month after my wife and I got married. Um, I'd had IVs beforehand when I would be in the hospital um, when I was younger, but never had a pick line placed and never been able to leave the hospital with IVs, which in one aspect I was super excited about because I didn't have to stay in that hospital anymore. Um, but the first pick line placement was um, <clears throat> sort of nerve wracking. Uh, didn't really know what to expect. Uh, didn't really like the way it felt after it had been placed to have this thing sort of just sitting in my arm um, <clears throat> and, you know, the bandage on it and if it itched and what happens if it got pulled out, did it get infected? Um, so it, it, that first time was um, scary. And at that point I was 26. Um, <clears throat> and now I've had several different pick lines placed over the years since then, over the past almost 10 years now. And um, they're not that big of a deal anymore. In fact, I actually go to a place, it's an outpatient center. Um, you know, by the time I get in and checked in, when they finally take me back into the room and put me on the table to place it, it's like a 15 minute, if that deal. Um, <clears throat> you know, and the worst part is a sort of initial pinch of the Novocaine to numb the area. Um, and then, you know, feeling sort of, you know, them put in the line, uh, initially the sort of, to be a little graphic, the stretching. Um, but, um, after that, you know, the bandage is on and it's over. And, um, after that, the worst part is the changing of the dressing. I'm not a fan of the changing of the dressing and as, uh, much as I try to calm myself when they do it and focus on my breathing, um, I never sort of can get over that like body tightening sort of nervousness of them, you know, <clears throat> changing the dressing and worrying if they're going to pull the line out a little bit and I might have to go get a new one. Um, but um, I do love the fact that I can have a home IV so I don't have to stay in the hospital and I can stay at home and get as much rest as possible when I'm on IVs and continue to work and hang out with my kids and my wife. Um, so those are the surgeries that I've had. Um, the impact that they've had on me, uh, I think, you know, in the long run, they've all been for the good. Um, but they are sort of nerve wracking and it's okay to be nervous going into them. Um, since I've started meditating, I found, um, getting my pig placement when I had my bronchoscopy the last time, um, being able to focus, on my, you know, my breath and calm myself down, um, really makes it easier to, um, to deal with. But again, I haven't had a ton of them. Um, and most of them were when I was younger. So, um, that's my story. I look forward to hearing sort of how you feel about the surgeries you've had related to CF, um, or any other surgeries that you've had and sort of what your body's gone through with those. And, um, I look forward to keeping in touch. Again, thanks for listening. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week uh, watching our videos. Um, please stay in touch. And uh, don't forget to uh, like us, follow us, interact with us. Um, we want to hear your stories, and we want to continue to learn from each other. So I wish you all a wonderful week. Stay healthy, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. I got cystic fibrosis. See, I've... Got cystic fibrosis